Uncle Lucas, can you make a bronze army guy? Yep, let's give it a try. Now I 3D printed some army men out of PLA. And I'll tell you, printing miniatures is a learning curve. Tiny little parts, tiny little weapons, they're not that easy to print. So I tried some bigger versions and that turned out a little bit better, but still not great. This guy's missing an arm. Ah! After some trial and error, I was able to get some prints that turned out pretty well. I used different support settings and different sized army men, and in the end, I just found that printing with a thicker layer line worked a lot better. The prints aren't perfect, but it just looks like these guys have seen a few battles. Gone. Keep firing, Sergeant. Don't worry, I'll get him, sir. <laughs> Ow, my foot! My gun's broken. So I've got a lot to pick from. Now I just need to see how many can fit on my spear tree. First thing I need to do is clean these up a little bit. There's a few flaws in the print, some prominent layer lines that I can erase. <laughs> And a few of the broken pieces, I'm gonna hold together with wax. When I burn it out, it's all gonna melt out the same, so it doesn't matter what it is. So wax is a good choice. If I was gonna keep it as a print, I wouldn't be using wax. I'll add a few small vents on their heads. So I've got six army men on here. I vented them through the helmet because when I burn the PLA out, there's gonna be a little bit of ash there. I'm gonna blow out the ash, but I don't want the ash to get stuck in little gaps. So I want air to be able to circulate through to hopefully carry some of that ash all the way out. We'll see. I normally get a beautiful shot of me wrapping this up with tape, but I forgot to push record, so here's a reenactment of that. I'll get the investment all mixed and measured, or measured and mixed. And the investment I use is UltraVest from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply. It's a great product. Flask will go in the kiln and all the PLA will burn out. But like I said, there's usually a little bit of ash that's left behind, so I use some compressed air to try to blow that away. Now this is a new flask, so I need to customize a few things so I can get it to fit in my vacuum casting setup. I cut a hole just big enough for it to fit, and then I take this metal plate and I'll attach it to my vacuum chamber. Now in this case, I'm running low on bronze, so I'm gonna take some scrap copper, mix it with tin, and make some tin bronze. Tin bronze is about 88% copper and 12% tin. And just so people are aware, there are a lot of different alloys of bronze. Just for the heck of it, I decided to top this off with some metallic silicon. The copper's melted first, and then I'll put the tin in. This is something that needs to be done carefully. I'm always amazed at how much the copper can splash when you throw these cubes of tin in. And you don't want molten copper dripping on your hand. Sometimes I feel the safest way is just to hold it above the furnace and let it drip in. I put a layer of liquid silicone down on my vacuum setup. That will act as a seal.
This new size flask is a little trickier to get out. Quenching helps break up the investment so I can get the bronze piece out of the flask. They'll be cleaned off with a sandblaster and then cut off the sprue tree. Then I'll break out the Dremel and start doing some metal chasing on the soldiers. There's a few bubbles left behind, but surprisingly, a lot of times you can just pick those off. a set of polishing heads and I'm gonna try to find just the right one for the job. I'm gonna try a leather one. Leather is surprisingly abrasive on metal but it gives it a good polish. What would a soldier be without his polished boots? So they're starting to take shape. The filament printer doesn't print in the highest detail, so these guys kind of look like they've been through a war. I might have to upgrade to a resin printer. I'm going to try one more thing with these, and then I think they'll be done. I've always wanted to try a vibrating tumbler to see how well it polished little things like this. This is the one my dad has for polishing bullet casings. And this will be my first time trying it. He wasn't impressed. But the question is, did it work? I left these in for about 24 hours and I think it needs a little bit longer, but we'll go with what we got. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier not the poet who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the politician, who gives us the right to vote. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag.